Henry White the second is here with us today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Toby? Yes, I'm doing great. Now, you've got a new book out called Above the Veil. So how would you describe the overall content of the book, really? Well, first of all, let me let me thank you for having me yeah. this morning. All right. Uh, an afternoon for you. Mm-hmm. So uh, Above the Veil is a collection of poetry over several years that I've written. The overarching theme, there are, there are you know different areas of it, but the overarching theme that it really addresses is a lot of uh, mental mental health issues, yeah. emotional issues, psychological issues, romance, lost love, you know, things like that, muses, the human condition in general. Mm, yeah. And is a lot of that inspired by your own real life? It is. It is. And um, I kind of go into it on the back cover of the book that it is, it's the human condition, yeah. right? And these are, you know, some of the things that I'm talking about are things that we've all experienced in life you know feelings of rejection sometimes feelings of inadequacy you know and then there's also feelings of hope in there as well and i what i did is with the, the concept really was that it was a poetic journal basically mm-hmm. writing has been my outlet for years and this was just kind of like a way for me to vent right and, yeah. and the gift that i have with poetry was my that was my way to do it. Now, this was never really initially meant for public consumption, but as I started to share some of the works that I have in there, you know, I had some friends that said, "Hey, you, you probably should consider doing a book because it, it could be beneficial to people out there." Mm-hmm. So, it is a very, very candid, very, very frank discussion on those topics. Yeah, um, yeah. And do you find that poetry is maybe easier to write about these kind of topics than a book maybe because I suppose a normal novel you'd have to come up with a whole story as well whereas poetry you can kind of just write about emotions can't you you can you can and and there you know there are different forms of poetry right there yeah. there are some poets that really they they write a book of poetry as if it is one cohesive story mm-hmm. kind of like with protagonist antagonist and this book is a collection, right? But when you take the, the the work as a whole, it does end up being a story. And I am the protagonist and the antagonist a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there there are, there are human experiences um, th- that I chronicle. But at the end of the day, with with a lot of us, if we look at ourselves and we really take responsibility for the things that have happened in life, which I have in this book, we will find out. And I did that. I was both the protagonist and the antagonist in the book Mm, yeah and what are the different poetry styles in the book is it all the same style throughout or do you sort of mix it up a bit yeah so that's the unique thing about me i don't really confine myself to one style yeah you you'll read some of them that that will read really technical like the classics some of them are more free flow some of them are even more spoken word type and that's just really part of my process it's just what i'm feeling at that time i get i get inspired a lot of times by strong emotion every Every writer is not like that. There are some writers that can really just sit down and plug out 200, 300 words a day and put something together. But with me, it's really when, I, when I'm inspired emotionally by things that I see in life, things that I see in nature, things that I observe, or really things that I'm struggling with in my own life. You know, when we all have those, those kind of questions that they can be tough to grapple with. And really, I just kind of unapologetically and unflinchingly address these things. It's a very, like I said, it's a very open and honest, candid discussion. I don't really hold anything back. I put everything on the line yeah. for the world to see. Mm. And why is it called Above the veil what does that actually mean thank thank that's a good question toby so uh. above the veil is above the veil of consciousness mm. as i talked about before you know with some of the things that i struggle with in the past with like insecurity um seeking external validation comparing myself to other people and i feel like when i'm operating in that capacity that i'm really below the veil of consciousness those are things that really have been learned from childhood, you know, you kind of get socialized and learn these different def- defense mechanisms to protect yourself, to protect your emotional well-being and psychological well-being. And when it just kind of runs on autopilot and it just becomes your natural inclination and reaction to things that occur in life and functioning above the veil is a lot about mindfulness. It's about taking time out. It's about considering things before you act. It's about really pondering what it is you're going to say before you say it. And sometimes not saying anything, but really just listening but knowing that if I'm finding myself comparing myself to some person, whether I'm saying that I'm better or worse mm. in any capacity, then I'm not functioning above the veil. When I'm functioning above the veil, it is a proper view of myself, a proper self 
perspective, self-love, and really understanding what my strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah, that's such an interesting concept. And when you're writing poetry, do you do things to help you get into the mindset maybe? And what's your process like overall? Well, again, it's for me, it's it's inspiration. Like there was, there was I'll just give you an example. There was a, a poem that I wrote. It was just about the rain. And it was simply me driving. I was actually on my way to get lunch. It was it was raining here that day. Mm. And in my mind, I was getting the perspective of the rain as not just that, but what is the life that rain brings? It brings vegetation, right? Which brings us food. And it, you know, it, it helps, you know, it feeds the plants and it, it fosters that photosynthesis, which gives us the oxygen we need. So mm-hmm. it's things like that. Like I could take something simple like that. And if I'm in that mind state, I can really break that down to what that really means overall. Things that we really just take for granted a lot of times. When we see rain, we're like, okay, we need an umbrella. Mm-hmm. And just that particular day. And now this is just an example, but on that particular day, I was thinking about it deeper. Yeah. So that's kind of the that's that's the way I write. It like I said, it, it's really inspired writing. I, I can sit down and just bang out just a lot of words just to to be participating in the process. And I've done that. Yeah. But that's I don't think that's where my best work is, though. Mm. I think my best work is really when I just get inspired in that moment, when something just really, really resonates with me. And I'm in that mind state of really thinking of, thinking of you know, the object or whatever the muse is, it deeper than just what it is at face value. Yeah. And how did you actually get interested in poetry originally? Well, I am in the U.S. I was remiss to say that before. And when I was younger, like a lot of uh, teenagers here, I was writing music, writing rap songs. And that really wasn't my lane. Mm. I realized that I wrote good lyrics, but I wasn't a good rapper. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I pivoted and this was the opportunity for me to still be able to express myself, my feelings, my emotions, my viewpoints within the realm of the talent that God has blessed me with. Yeah, absolutely. So after this book, have you got any more on the way? I'm not really working on anything yet. No. This book is going to be released January 18th, 2022. Right now it is available for pre-order on Amazon on and it's also on Barnes and Noble. So really right now it's just that whole process of promoting and creating awareness. And kind of when I get comfortable in that and when the book releases and launches, then I'll I'll, I'll start working on the next project. I mean, I've written some poems for it, but I haven't really come up with an overall concept of what I want the book to be like I did with Above the Veil. But that's a very good question. Mm, yeah, absolutely. There will be more. To, there will be more to come. Yay. Don't worry. Now we can get excited then, as long as we know yeah, there's more. <laughs> well, in the meantime, where can we check out this book? I take it it's everywhere that books exist. Well, it's in Barnes and Noble right now. Yeah. Um, pre-order again. So mm. you can really only do that online right now on amazon the ebook is available for pre-order right now and the paperback version will be available january 18th when this book is released so those are the two main sources right now yeah. and um kind of building up momentum to it uh, i submitted the book for reviews to the reader's favorite site which is um it's pretty well known has a lot of credibility so far yeah. i've gotten some five-star reviews on that so that's good as well i'm, I'm really excited about it and i think uh I think there's going to be a, a good segment of your listeners that this is going to resonate with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on the show today. It's been great chatting to you. Thank you, Toby. I appreciate the time.